Thank y'all for tuning in to another episode of Soul Purpose Farms. My name is Aaron. Vic. It's your boy Quiz. So what's going on with y'all to tap in? How to uh, what's the uh mental health climate looking like around y'all way? The what? The mental health climate. It's going. Okay. What about you, Quiz? I'm trying to keep my head above water, but <laughs> hey, what's been so hard, man? What's been so difficult, man? Just managing everything, you know. what I'm saying, finding out the time, and you know, what I'm saying to do certain things and prioritizing what's, you know, what I'm saying what's what's a necessity and what's not necessarily a necessity at the time. You know, what I'm saying it's midterm, so it's it's just that time of year where you know, what I'm saying you didn't hit that. That peak, you know what I'm saying? It's going to chill out in a second, but just get through all these tests and stuff like that, boy. Been stressing. <laughs> <laughs> boy. So what about you, Vic? Take a day at a time. <laughs> you better. <laughs> <laughs> that's, cool. Yeah, that's cool that you were saying as far as like prioritizing and different things like that. Um, Like this weekend, I know y'all was able to link up but I was contemplating dealing with a lot <laughs> because I know y'all enjoy uh, the homecoming, you know, it's homecoming season. And I really wanted to uh, enjoy it with y'all, but I realized at the same time, like the obligations I have up, uh, in front of me right now, it, I could have made it work, but I realized I needed to get something turned in. So I was like, okay, if, if I go out there, I got to drive, and I didn't prioritize for it. Like, I could have did it. I did not, that was not in my priorities until like the last minute, like pat the bag and everything. Then just had a revelation, said, bro, just cool out. And just wise counsel told me to cool out. So I was like, okay, let me do that. So I think it was a good decision because um, I was able to get uh, some turn in that was important to me um, because um, this year I'm working on my own research. And last year, I submitted to the same conference and I uh, got denied to get into the conference. It was like my goal to get up in there, you know what I'm saying? Not only just do a post presentation, but do an oral presentation within the um, conference. Hopefully, fingers crossed, I get accepted into this conference. Uh, it's probably one of the most rigorous conferences uh, out there within our discipline. So hopefully I can get in there, present my work, work and just show these people what I made of. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's on the way, bro. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I, I also you check it in. I also got uh some revisions. Well, not some revisions, some feedback uh from uh one of the first uh manuscripts I submitted, and I got feedback this past week. Man, they tore it all apart. But uh, well, let me just say one review tore it all apart, and the other two they was they were they was rocking with it. But the the final uh, say so was like. It, it will be accepted with major revision. So I got to meet my advisor, go through it and just make the correction that need to be corrected. But that was cool because even when I just read through it again, well, I'm like, man, I haven't even seen this manuscript in about six months. Look at it. I just look at him like, oh, dang, I have grown a lot as far as my uh, writing goes because I'm like, I was still fresh out of crumb when I wrote this <laughs> for the most part. But I even saw uh, it grow throughout the whole entire school year when I was working with it because I didn't realize like it's best to go ahead and write when it's fresh in your mind. Don't take, you know what I'm saying? Don't take the time, but don't take too much time because it's gonna be like I ain't really interested in them no more, and I'm not gonna put my best first, uh, my best effort into this work. So it was cool seeing that. So that was my first time uh, experiencing both things, like submitting my first oral presentation for a conference. Um, well, abstract for a conference and getting feedback on the uh, manuscript that was part of. Yeah, boy, I'm, I'm glad you made the decision to stay there and handle your business, man. Because, boy, you weren't missing nothing at Crown University. It was going down, man. So you want to tell, <laughs> tell the people a little bit about, you know what I'm saying, a highlight from uh, this past weekend? Man, my highlight was linking up with Vic. I ain't even going to lie. I ain't even going to lie. Like, <laughs> Like, linking up with Vic, her and Kristen linking up, you know what I'm saying, being able to kick it for a little minute, man, that that, that made me smile, but I ain't even gonna lie. 
<laughs> that was my thing, but they had me pop out, man. I don't be popping out. <laughs> yeah. I don't be popping out. Man. I go to class, I handle my business, and I, I be at the crib, man. I ain't I don't be having no reason to pop out. But yeah, I popped out for a little second at weekend. So that was straight. That was straight. We had a ball though. I know they were glad to see you in Bulldog Nation. It's another DB fried fish and barbecue first time. <laughs> <laughs> I know they was excited to see you, man. So what about you, Vic? You know, you traveled the farthest. What what it was looking like for you out there? You seen the professor? It was cool. It was cool hanging out with Quiz and uh, uh seeing people, seeing um. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so and kicking it with Kristen we had a good time so it was cool that what it is so I want to ask both of y'all since um, y'all are going through this transition through our life and especially with uh, learning how to navigate the spaces that y'all in right now what are some of the takeaways from this past weekend into how you can apply it to what you got going on now just saying like, what you mean like far like did you have any like what well i just use myself as, as an example so this weekend i went out to the home come here just walk around went out there too long and just realized man i got a purpose to do what i need to do because i'm 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 not saying i'm greater than the situation i'm in right now but it was almost like this ain't it for me no more like it don't it don't do it for me no more like it, it's cool but if I have to do something like this for like tailgate and all that type of stuff, I would rather be around people who I enjoy and do it on my own terms. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely had that revelation this weekend, good boy. I get enticed. By, <laughs> by, I get enticed by that by that other stuff. I'm going to say that other stuff. Okay. Gonna leave. <laughs> I get enticed by that other stuff. So, boy, I be trying to, boy, let me tighten up. But this really ain't for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, as bad as I would like to be on that or like to work that move, man, I'm in my lane. You know what I'm saying? I'm doing what I need to be doing. You know what I'm saying? And with me over here, I'm probably way more than if I was to go ahead and switch over and try to, you know what I'm saying, work a move over there. So just, man, like you said, man, just making the right decisions. And even with that, with, with all of that stuff around you, being able to say, man, what I got going on is greater and, and staying focused on that. You know what I'm saying? Because that stuff will sidetrack you. Yeah, it will. It will sidetrack you. It will sidetrack you. You know what I'm saying. So just, just, just staying focused. And I be, I be trying to get that, get that going with the other students too. Cause man, it's a lot of students that feel like they don't necessarily fit in, even though they do fit. If that make any sense. Yeah. Cause, cause like ain't no in between. Like now with the students, with you know what I'm saying, with the climate of the students now, it's a lot different. So it's like with the guys is is one or two things and with the females is one or two things and it's like it'd be hard for people that don't fit into those two categories to you know what i'm saying find themselves or, or find a they way within the you know what i'm saying university system at certain universities you know what i'm saying particularly you know the hbcu universities um because that's what the culture we come from just just knowing how to you know what i'm saying have good discernment and navigate, you know what I'm saying, the way you need to navigate, because there's a lot of stuff that throw you off out there, boy. Man, I ain't gonna lie. It's difficult, man. I'm gonna be honest, though, because I start seeing certain things, I'm like, man, boy, boy, I still got that, you know what, in me. Yes, I get enticed. I still got that east side in me. <laughs> and I, I, I recognize that. Yeah, and, and, and the thing about it, like, I think, I, I won't put it on the spot, but, like, one thing that, you know, I love being around my people. And I realized, like, I guess this episode going to be going big. No. Oh. <laughs> I guess this episode going to be going big because I recognize it's only our people. I ain't going to say it's only our people, but we do it to me more than other uh, people do it as far as ethnicities go. It's going big on folks. Like, what is it about that? And I'm talking about in all spaces, the academic space, the the cultural space, man. It's folk, go to church, folks. Going big on you. Yes, man. I think a lot of a lot of these folk, man. They don't had their nuts held on them for so long. <laughs> that when they finally get out there, it's time to pop that shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to pop. I don't know, man. I, I don't know, man. I just I just sometimes I had to embody that bass, boy. I'm bigger than y'all. <laughs> and, and, and crazy that you was saying that. You know, uh, um, I'm gonna check out some more of the Kanye. That you sent me last night, I'm I'm pretty sure that all of us in review at least five minutes of it. Oh my goodness! 
what I would love for sole purpose, Kanye, I know you go through and you get people, reach out to us, set up the interview. We fooling with you. You cannot speak, you cannot speak for the black people. <laughs> No, 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 no. I wasn't going there. I wasn't going. I wasn't going there. Check me out. Check me where I'm going. I was going. Kanye, reach out to us. We would love to come out there to the uh, to the ranch. Oh, we would love to be at the ranch, yeah. Just to see what you got going on. Just to know that a black man or whatever you identify as, a person of color, owns 20,000 acres plus... That that's that's incredible to me. Like that's the part where we want to reach out to see. Yeah, that's like, something we definitely want to see. Yeah, we want to see. We want to see that aspect. You know what I'm saying? Like get that side of. Oh, oh, you doing this for the environment? You doing this for people? You putting these people in position? Looking at the daily operation within your ranch. That's yeah. what we interested in. So the other stuff that come along with, you know, what I'm saying the entertainment lane. We're not an entertainment. We're in an yeah. agriculture lane. So combining the two, as far as like what we who we are as people. It's just human race, not just as black people, just as human race. Reach out to us, yay, man. We'd love to come out there and see what you got going on as far as your day to day operations and your vision as far as like why you wanted to get into the agriculture space, uh, starting your own ranch. So that's something that we interested in doing here at Soul Purpose Farms. Oh, definitely. I oh, think, it, I think we want to take a different spring. It's a spin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Hey, hey. We think about going bigger than y'all. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's that's the stance I'm I'm interested in because uh when we talk about uh food and stuff like that, I know everybody got their own opinion about food and things like that. When I if I was hungry, like so I sat didn't eat for a week straight, seven days. I don't care who you was, if you put it in front of me, I'm gonna eat it. Whatever you put a hamburger in front of me, I'm gonna eat it. Yeah, you're gonna be hungry. Yeah, so that's why I'm saying like food don't have no color to me. It don't. To me, like when you put that food down in front of me, it don't have no color. If you if people are hungry out here, like in the way we raise the food and how we view fuel, how we communicate the messages from the uh, research we're doing in the classrooms and in these environments to the people, that's something that I really want to get out there a little bit more. Yeah. And, and a lot of the work that we even doing, like far like how to learn to put people in position to the uh to navigate these spaces. I mean, I'm like, it's it's so many opportunities, and I'm like. I mean, V was having a conversation the other day, like realizing, like, where do where do we fall? Like, we, you know, what I'm saying, not second guessing ourselves, but like, where do we fall in these places? Though, I don't know if you want to elaborate more on the conversation V that we had, and in, in the conversation that did, I, I'm gonna take that uh, advice you gave me too about um, your professor. If you touch on that, wait, 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 what what part? When your uh, professor, wait, you got to remind me. <laughs> like, well, I, I know what kind of space you in right now. <laughs> well, I'm not in no specific space. <laughs> Wait, what what you referring to though? I'm referring to when you saying like your uh advisor, like Kelly, you know ad. You oh, know. oh, yeah. Okay. So understanding, yeah. I mean, yeah, and we we talk about it all the time, like understanding, you know what I'm saying, what lane, what lane you're in and finding your lane. Cause it's easy, I don't know. I'm still trying to, one thing she told me aside from that is, um, cause I was asking her about just my own expertise when I leave. And I'm sure we all kind of think about that. Quiz, you coming up at the end of your program and you know what I'm saying? Our program's only three years. So we think about like, dang, like this whole, our whole time here is really just practice and figuring out which lane we fit in, mm -hmm. in this small amount of time. And so she brought up a good point um she was just like she didn't learn her lane till after being in you know what I'm saying grad school it took being after actually practicing to really find her lane but to piggyback off of what Erin said she also brought up because I know coming into the program I, I was dealing with this idea of everything had to tie back to agriculture like everything and because most of my all my experiences in different parts of agriculture I'm trying to tie this stuff back to those experiences or just what I know because I know I'm in a college of ag um, and then I'm in a, you know, I'm studying it now too. And so she was just like, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, agriculture. And it made me think, I'm like, dang, I can't allow myself to think outside of that box. You know what I'm saying? And think more broad in a way that 
understanding what I want to do or where my expertise can be applied in many different areas within ag and outside of ag. Yeah. So really just think about diversifying and not minimizing myself to just focusing on agriculture because we all know ag in many different aspects. You know what I'm saying? So she put that in perspective for me and I've been looking at my experiences throughout and she told me that my first semester so I've been able to look at my experiences um throughout my program through that lens because I know when she at first brought that cyber security stuff up I was telling Aaron like I don't know about all that you know what I'm saying but it's cyber biosecurity so it's a niche you know what I'm saying looking at cyber security within ag and life sciences but also it goes back to what my background is in which is program development program planning um and the leadership piece within that and so understanding that that has helped me out through my whole process um not allowing myself to feel so you know what i'm saying so confined yeah i ain't gonna lie that's the same thing with me like when i got on that project when i first came on was the uh urban agriculture uh, education uh, program. I'm like, man, I don't know nothing about no urban agriculture. And I thought about, thought back about to like, what what value can I bring to this program as far as the research? I'm like, hey, even though I wasn't in a technically urban setting, it was an in-town setting, like, you know what I'm saying, when me and Vic were doing cypress and stuff like that, going around, doing the uh, forage programs at the middle school in Orangeburg County, I'm like, that's in, in town and rural areas, then also uh, implementing the cultural responsive uh, piece, piece too. I'm like, dang, I see value in it. And I see how I can bring value in it. Because one thing I got away from that project was that culturally responsive piece. Like what we're doing right now, this is culturally responsive uh, work in itself because we're taking high-level uh, conversations and breaking them down to where people can understand and see themselves reflected in what we're talking about. So yeah. that's something that I recognize. I said, dang, cultural responsiveness can be used in every aspect as far as trying to disseminate messages. So I'm very interested in that. So that was one good takeaway from doing that. Like some of the stuff I wasn't really interested in, but I was interested back to what Vic was saying as the program in, in itself, because it took uh, high school agriculture educators um, from Midwest, brought them down here to the university, and they was able to go through um, a lot of different sectors within the College of Ag and seeing how cultural responsive pedagogy could be implemented within their own curriculum and then implemented uh, with their own students and see the response as far as like student engagement, student voice, as far as um, keeping students, just keeping students in school period, you know what I'm saying, uh, decreasing the uh, college dropout rate. So that was, that was incredible. After I took, it, took a step back and said, man, I can't stand doing this work. And when I said like, dang, bro, this work got real power in it. Yeah. And, like, and it's something that we had already always been around, but like, you know, sometimes you got to step outside yourself. So that was something incredible. I, I didn't had a couple of experiences like that because I deal with so many different projects uh, with my assistantship uh, through extension. It's like, I really got to get outside of myself sometimes, like tighten up and just realize, man, look, at it's really bigger than you. Yeah. Really I, realized, I realized that too. I was going to say, um, like when you start getting into the work, even the classes that I teach, like um, I taught two classes last semester. I'm teaching one this semester. But even in those classes, like I ain't too much was invested in the topics, but I I enjoy teaching and I enjoy facilitating conversations with students, undergrad students, graduate students. Like I love doing that. And so even though the topic you know, is a little shaky. I still had autonomy to kind of build lessons and develop relationships with students within the classroom. Why are you laughing? Man, because you sound like a great professor. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> but I um finding my own finding my own lane and my own passion within that, I think that's what all of us, that's what the you know part of the reason why we're doing what we're doing um in school now is even though the project as a whole may not be but we find our own little niche within the project that sparks because that's what we're good at and that's what we're passionate about so yeah 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 yeah. that's real yeah man so but any closing remarks y'all want to add to um this episode man man then it's about 15 minutes wasn't it 
No, nah, man. We, we we cutting down on the time so we can expand on our territory. <laughs> okay, okay. You know what I'm man, I, man, let's work together and not go big on each other. It's gonna be hard, but it, as you see that we hard, but man, look, man, let's. It's work. gonna be hard to not go big, big on each other. Not us on this. In this. Oh, you saying? But I was about to say when we talk about we talk about going big, we talk about as far as black folks. Oh, you don't have to tell me because that's you. You know, I stand on that. That's the pet. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to tell me that. Okay, okay. because <laughs> I, I, I was trying like, to understand what you were saying. I'm like, well, hold up now. Yeah, <laughs> can't go big on each other that's a no-no yeah because i remember like i'm gonna just use my personal i'm gonna be vulnerable right now you know i remember i'm just you know what i'm saying taking this experience personal experience so i was in um in school back in the day or still uh what's that high school middle school high school middle school and I had a girl i had a crush on man who she was just driving me crazy man oh lord man look here i went to uh Went went to work, you know what I'm saying? Scrape my little coins up and up buying her uh two shirts from the fleet market. I thought that was more, one of the most players things I could did. You know what I'm saying? You know what that girl did? She gonna say, "Oh, this fake Ed Hardy." I said, "What?" Went big on you. I said, "I'm like, I'm like, man," and I'm not knowing the difference between real and fake. You know what I'm saying? Like, back then, I'm just so happy just to. Like you know what I'm saying, give something to somebody. I was oh, and I was so excited, like man, I know she gonna kill this one. Like, I know she gonna kill this one, man. <laughs> man, you should have seen how she grabbed it and balled it in her face. I said, this. I said, okay, okay, never again. Lil Donna voice. I never let her man look here. So I won't go there. But I was just saying, like, far like going big on people, you never know the impact it may have on somebody. Never. I'm saying they may take it personal. You got a situation where we just touched on earlier. Uh, if you ever seen a Kanye three part uh documentary, people had went big on him for years, and you see the repercussions of that. Embrace people, meet yeah, people where they at, be with them up. Yeah, because so one of our mentors that we close to, people went big on him for years, and he is still talking about the same thing for <laughs> for two years straight, going on three. It's like you never know, and, and you would never recognize like people see how people can be assets to you. Yeah, see the value on them. They you might not see them every day, but guess what? It's value in, in all people. Yeah, it's value in all people. The good Lord put place us here for a reason. So just just try to be mindful. You know what I'm saying? When you're saying certain things, some people act in ter- uh cert- a certain way, man, because you never know how it impacts somebody. Because. Mm-hmm. I ain't gonna lie, there's a lot of stuff deep down inside of me that drive me up there like, well, I gotta go get it. Talking to Vic early today, I said, man, look at, I get upset when I don't, I miss uh, miss uh, waking up. I, I'll wake up and he might get back in the bed knowing I need to be in the gym. And I get so upset with myself. Yeah. And, and he, what did I tell you? You told me that Prime didn't play the whole entire game. He went to the sideline sometimes. And, 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 and that's the truth, but guess what? I don't, I ain't show her too. Like, yeah, I didn't get it in like my full workout in in the morning, but guess what? I still did my morning regimen in the room. Then I went, uh, went, uh, went to the office. Then on my lunch break, guess what I went to? Went over to the gym, got, you know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I got it in. But that's all I got to say, man. Just be mindful how you talk to people because it, it'll go a long way and it get you more money in the end. You know what I'm saying? And it create more opportunities for you, really. Like yeah. when, you, when you're trying to just do do so much because it creates a cohesive unit between the people. So yeah, yeah, yeah. anything you want to say, Vic, you know what I'm saying? Quiz said, don't go big. Don't go big. Don't go big. So that's what we're going to say. We're going to see y'all next week. Got a lot of, uh, we we'll talk to the content experts. We got a lot of stuff coming. We're sitting on it. We about, oh, to, yeah, drop. Yeah. We about to drop soon. It's gone. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the way. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> y'all think y'all bigger than me I'm bigger than y'all <laughs> peace man